each contestant has two chances to get help from our survival instructor, Kevin. All they have to do is yell out, help me, Kevin! Now, Jackie, you actually used one of those. Are you hoping not to totally mess up this next one? Nah, I'll be right. I got this in the bag. And Guy, you totally nailed that one. Good work, dude. Thanks, man. I think, I think you might actually win this. Cheers. Thanks, man. Ouch! Round one, so our contestants abseil down a terrifying cliff face and then have to use their survival instincts to find true north. They found themselves here at the river. Now it's time for round two. Let's see what's in store for them. <laughs> On part two of the gauntlet, contestants Jackie and Guy have to build a raft to cross a river made entirely from materials laid out for them. Woohoo! Okay. Okay, get the long bits in the middle. Well, I've got some long pieces of bamboo and some shorter pieces, so I think I'm going to gather all my longer bits first and line them up. And then I might somehow be able to tie them to some shorter pieces if I put them perpendicular to the long pieces, but I'm honestly not really sure what I'm doing. There's a lot of rope to work with. I think I've just got to somehow weave it all through the bamboo and hopefully the bamboo will stay together. Like I always say, houses are made out of bricks and cement and rafts are made out of this stuff. At the moment, it looks like Guy is having a heap of trouble over there and Jackie's actually doing really well. Good work, Jackie. So I've built so many things in my life. I'm feeling pretty confident. I've done toolboxes and bird houses. It's just like a jigsaw puzzle, finding all the pieces and putting it into place. So talking from experience, I think it needs to be really tight and secure. So I'm going to knot it really tight and have these long pieces across to make it all secure. Oh man, this is tough work. I think I've been going for about an hour or two. I don't know anymore, but I'm getting close. These challenges are massive workouts for the brain, but which part of the brain are they really working? Well, one of the biggest parts of the brain is actually called the cerebrum. Now, this is broken up into two halves, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. Now, the left hemisphere actually controls the muscles on the right-hand side of your body, and the right hemisphere controls the muscles on the left. And it was thought for a long time that if you're trying to work out a crossword or a puzzle, you're utilising your left hemisphere. Or if you're doing something a little bit more abstract, like painting a masterpiece, or in my case, not. You're actually utilising your right hemisphere. But what about when we're working up a sweat playing sport? Which part of the brain is actually in control then? Well, way back at the back of your head, just down a little bit, is a little part of the brain called the cerebellum. Now, the cerebellum is only about one eighth of your actual brain size. It's super small. And it's the part of the brain that makes your muscles work together. Say when you're standing up straight or staying balanced or even moving around. But it's also the part of the brain that remembers and learns things like riding a bike or surfing. If you didn't have this small part of your brain, you'd actually forget how to ride a bike. So every time you grab that bike, you'd have to start from square one. I've been cleaning the lap today. It's been looking a bit drab, so I wanted to make something that was going to brighten up the place. So I'm going to be making a density column. As I've been cleaning up the lab, I found this great example to be able to show you what density is. This empty box and this pile of books take up roughly the same amount of space, but this pile of books here has more stuff packed into it. So we're going to do an experiment today, a colourful experiment to show how different liquids have different densities. If you want to try this at home, you'll need a few different liquids which you can find in your kitchen. Before you look around, make sure you ask mum and dad for help. I've got a few different liquids here today. For example, honey, dishwashing liquid, oil, milk, water and even baby oil. You're also going to need scales, some measuring cups, a tall glass cylinder, and some food colouring to colour your liquids. Firstly, measure out each liquid so you have the same volume for each one. I've used about 100 mils for each of mine. Then using your scales, measure them out from heaviest to lightest. We're going to start with the heaviest, almost dense liquid, 
and pour that in first. In this case, we have honey. When you're pouring these really dense liquids, make sure that you pour from the centre. You don't want to get any honey on the sides of your cylinder or column. Okay, next layer. We've got maple syrup. Making sure you're pouring from the centre of your column. I'm a little bit nervous about these next layers because if you don't pour in carefully, the two layers might mix because the densities can be very close. At this point, it may be good to be able to pour in your liquids from the sides so that way the densities of your liquids don't mix. I think I mixed up two of my liquids. So the milk has gone to the bottom because it's more dense than the detergent. However, I think it looks pretty cool. So we're going to add a layer of water now, and our water layer today is blue. To make sure that your water doesn't mix with any of the other liquids, tilt the column on the side and pour the water in really slowly. Next, we're going to add some oil. Make sure you add your oil slowly from the side of your column so that it settles on the water. And last but not least, we're adding in our baby oil, which would float on top of all our other liquids. Each layer floats on top of the layer below because it is lighter or less dense. If you want to see the density of the layers more clearly, try this. Grab a bolt, a ping pong ball and a baby tomato and drop them in and see where they end up in each of the layers in your density column. So here goes the bolt. And that's gone all the way through the top layers. And it looks like it's sinking towards that bottom layer of honey. Let's try baby tomato and see where that sits. So it looks like a baby tomato is floating in between those middle layers right over there because we can't see in the bottom layers and we can't see in the top layers. And our last object we're gonna try and float is our ping pong ball. So let's see where this sits. And there we go, floating on that top layer. That looks super weird. Excellent, my work here is done. Boats are big and heavy. This rock is also heavy. But when I drop this in the water, it sinks. It sunk there, see? So why doesn't a 10-ton yacht sink? Because of something called buoyancy. Buoyancy is a force that pushes upwards and it affects objects in water or fluid. Whether an object sinks or floats depends on its weight versus its buoyancy. When an object's weight is less than its upward buoyant force, it will float. See? When an object's weight is greater than its upward buoyant force, it will sink. Just like that. Remember what Vache told us about density? Well, density is about how much space something takes up versus how much it weighs. So the wider an object is, the weight is spread out more. And that way the weight isn't stuck all in one spot because the force pushing down is far less than the force pushing up in one spot. And you're less likely to sink. You can try this one out for yourself next time you're swimming. Try it floating curled up in a bowl versus stretched out and see which one's easier. This is the same rule for boats. Boats are designed to float despite their weight. The base of the boat, which is called the hull, isn't actually solid, it's hollow. This reduces the overall effective weight of the boat by spreading the weight over a larger surface area. This allows buoyancy to work its magic and that's it. That's how a boat stays afloat. The biggest ship ever weighed 600,000 tons and was 74 meters long. 
So really big things can float. You just gotta use your head. Float. <laughs> it appears that guy's not really navigating his way through this one like he did in the first challenge. Kevin, Kevin, where are you, mate? I need some help, man. Oh, here, Kevin, mate. there you are. Yep, what seems to be the problem? Oh, look, this just doesn't look like it's going to get me across the river dry. What can I do to make it better? Well, you're actually doing a pretty good job so far. It's not too bad. OK. The only thing we need to do, obviously, we need to make it a lot wider. We'll have the long ones in the middle, and yep. these need to be much tighter. Yeah. Okay, and what we'll do, we'll do this three more times along the length, and that uh, hopefully should get you across. Oh, what do we have here? It looks like Guy needs a little bit of help. Jackie, on the other hand, is doing really well. I'm pretty good with my hands, so I'm very confident that these knots are tight and secure. Got some jerry cans under the raft, so I'm hoping it'll make it a little bit more buoyant. Ooh, interesting technique over there, Jackie. Let's go. She's getting her raft in the water. Will it float? Yeah. Woohoo! Floating! Wow, Jackie appears to be in the zone, which is a big difference since the last challenge. And Guy, on the other hand, not so much. Have another one. Get that thick one. This one? Yep. So why bamboo? Bamboo is quite buoyant, especially when it dries out. You know, rafts this size, uh, one person can lift it very, very easily. Uh, it's also naturalised along waterways. So you're showing me how to make it tighter at the moment, but why do the rafts have to be so long? It's buoyancy. Obviously, the longer you have it, the more buoyancy you're going to have, and it's going to spread the, uh, the weight evenly. And that's why we can also do outriggers on the side as well. What are outriggers? They're extra buoyancy panels on the side. So we'll have a gap, and that means we're not adding extra weight. Um, but because they are a lot wider than the initial raft, um, it just, again, adds extra stability. Great, and it doesn't matter that there's a gap between No, them. no, it doesn't matter, no, no. Similar to, say, a catamaran. You've got two holes with nothing in between. Anything to keep me afloat sounds great. Yep, you won't be sinking to the bottom. Brilliant. Ooh, it appears the pressure is really starting to rock the boat. Whoa. And it looks like Jackie is rocking hers all the way to the other side of the river. She's in the lead. Jackie has made it across the river and it's time for her to giddy up and go. I'm off to the finish line. Yep. Just pop it down here. It's floating! It is. Kevin, thanks well so much. We held it. Now all that's left is I have to get across. Get your paddle. Thanks, Kevin. No worries. See you later. See ya. I'm going to head across the river and uh, get to the finish line. Jackie's going to win unless Guy somehow magically overtakes her. He's going to need a racehorse for that. I'm a little bit behind, but my horse Manet here is going to help me get to the end. All right, let's go. Oh, and here comes the lady Jackie. Oh, congratulations, Jackie. You are the first one here. <laughs> Waiting for Guy. Beat me. What's going on? Oh, here he comes! 
Who comes now? There yeah. you are, guys. Yeah. Took your time. Sound a little tired as well. Ooh, took your time, buddy. <laughs> now, I can tell you two that scores are 1-1. One, one. Both have won a challenge each, and you both have asked help from Kevin. You guys head off and go get ready for round three. Yeah. Um, guys, can I get somebody to help me get down? <laughs> oh, my pants are stuck. Oh my gosh, rafting today. That was our challenge. So difficult. How do you make a raft? I've never done that before. I just did not want to sink or get wet today, but I ended up having to use my help me Kevin and we got there, but now I've only got one left. I think I can do this. So we are halfway through the challenge now. We've done part one and two. We've done some pretty crazy things and I don't know what else they're gonna throw at us. I'm a bit interested, a bit excited and a bit nervous, but let's have a look. A force is a push or a pull that acts upon an object. <laughs> we use force when we jump up and down on a trampoline. For example, as we jump, the trampoline is pushed down by our force and we're pushed up into the air by the force of the trampoline. A famous scientist and mathematician named Isaac Newton wrote a law about this back in 1686. This is called Newton's Third Law. In other words, if you push an object, the object pushes back in an opposite direction, equally as hard. Newton's third law also explains why we can get our raft to move through water more effectively when we row with an oar rather than a bamboo stick. When the oar blade pushes on the water, the water pushes back on the oar blade with an equal force, and so gives the boat more push. This is because the flat shape of the oar blade has a greater surface area than the stick. With this greater surface area, the oar pushes against more water, and so there is more water pushing back than there would be if you just used a stick. So what happens to the raft if we use a bamboo stick in a different way? Well, when we push against the river bottom with the stick, the river bottom pushes back with the same force and propels the raft. Actually, it's the same type of action as we get when we're walking. When we walk, our feet exert a force on the ground beneath us, and the ground exerts an equal and opposite force back on our feet, propelling us forward in the same way the raft is propelled by the water. In the beautiful Raw National Park with Uncle Dean, who is going to show me how traditional canoes are made. Uncle Dean, how are you going? Yeah, very well. What about yourself? I'm good, thanks. This is an amazing canoe. Yeah, I know. I, I'm pretty proud of it and the people who built it with me, I'm proud of them. So tell me a bit about how it's made. Where we start is by stripping off the outer layers of bark which is very fibrous. We soaked it for a little while and used water with fire to turn it inside out and then pull the ends together, tie it up and put the braces in. And now it's ready to be tested. How are we actually going to steer it? Well, Faye, this is your steering wheel. Cool. This will get you around that water out there. It'll turn you around and it's your power. So it's up to you, Faye. Away you go. Thanks. Let's go and test it out then. You got any tips for me? Bon voyage. You're on your own. Oh. 